You know, numerous unforeseen circumstances ended this person's career and his life way too early. A lot of uh, Montreal and Cincinnati fans miss him because what he did uh, in Major League Baseball showed excellence in every level. And uh, like I said, there's no way to say it. Were it not for a, a major disease, when he came to Montreal, he would have done in Montreal what he did in Cincinnati. So today we're talking about the great uh, Clay Kirby. Born Clayton Lewis Kirby Jr. on June 25th, 48 in Washington, D.C. Played with the Padres for a number of seasons before moving over to Reds in 74 and 75. And he also took the field with the Expos in 76. Now, born in the, the U.S. capital, he attended Washington Lee High School in Arlington, Virginia. He was drafted by the Cardinals in the third round of the 66th draft. However, in, in October 68, he was chosen in the expansion draft by the Padres, who would begin play in 69 along with the Expos. He made his major league debut at age 20 with the first place Padres on April 11, 69, as the Padres fell at home 8 nothing to the San Francisco Giants. The first major league uh, hitter he ever faced was Willie Mays, who walked as Kirby gave up three earned runs in four innings. Although he led the National League in losses that year were 20 against seven wins, he had a uh, strong 3.0 earned our run average and 35 starts with 215.1 innings pitch. So that's pretty good. I mean, uh, he was sort of their uh, Jim Clancy, as we say, of that squad. Now, on July 21st, 1970, he made major headlines across North America. He was working on a no-hitter against the visiting New York Mets after eight innings but trailed one nothing as the Mets scored in the first inning after a walk to Tommy Agee. Agee stole second base, Bud Harrison popped out to the shortstop, then Kirby walked Ken Singleton and the Mets uh, pulled off a double steal. Agee was now on third. Singleton was on second and Art Shamsky was the batter. He had a ground ball to second base and Ron Slocum, who threw him out as Agee, Agee scored. With two outs, Padres manager Preston Gomez had Cito Gasson pitch hit for Kirby in the bottom of the eighth, denying him a chance to complete the no-hitter. The 10,373 fans in attendance booed long and hard uh, about the uh, the move, and uh, Padres reliever Jack Balshun then gave up two hits and three hits in the ninth inning. The Mets' Jim McAndrew had retired 50 batters in a row en route to what would be a three-hit, three-nothing victory for the Mets. According to Mets pitcher Tom Seaver, the Mets, the Mets bench, including me, just gasped in disbelief. Seaver told sports writer Joel Durso, I personally would have let Kirby hit. If the pennant the race were involved, no, but in this situation, yes, give him every opportunity. That season, Kirby had a 10-16 record of a 4.53 ERA. The next two years, Kirby had numbers of 15-13 and 13, with a 2-8-3 ERA, 13 complete games there. In 71, he was 12-14. and 14. In 73, his record fell to 8-18 and 18 with a 4-7-9 ERA. Again, the top pitcher the Padres had. The Padres, who began playing in 69, were the last major league baseball team to ever have thrown a no-hitter until Joe Musgrove threw the franchise's first on April 9, 2021, against the Rangers. Fans and writers occasionally attribute his unlikely failure to the curse of Clay Kirby in recognition of the controversial decision by Gomez to remove Kirby for the game. I mean, what you got to lose? The Padres were like uh, the Expos or a developing club, give him a chance to seek glory. Bill Stone and... Uh, Gabe was given a chance for the no-hitter, and he would have got it twice. Now, this is where his fortune changed. In November 73, Kirby was traded to Reds, Raul Confidler, Bobby Tolan, and the move paid off as Kirby went 12-9 with ERA at 3-28 as the Reds won 98 games. In 75, Kirby was one of six starters to win 10 or more contests for the Big Red Machine, who won the National League title as he went 10-6 with ERA of 4-7-2 in 19 starts. The Reds later won the 75 World Series, but Kirby did not play in the postseason. Now, he was eventually sent to the Expos for Bob Bailey in December 1275. In January 76, Kirby was stricken with a long bout of pneumonia before he joined the Expos in Florida for spring training. He was still weak and had a sore shoulder when the season opened. He got off to a terrible start and never recovered in the 76 season. He fell to a 1-8 record with an ERA of 572, and it was his final major league season. Montreal released him on December the 2nd, 76, in uh, January 77. The Padres picked up the former pitcher to give him another chance. He invited him to a spring training camp in Yuma, but a knee injury in the final week of spring training delayed his comeback try for almost two months. The Padres placed him under PCL Farm Club in Hawaii, 
He won his first game for the Islanders on June 18th, but never won another. According to teammate John DeQuisto, himself a former Expo, in his book Fastball John, game after game, I would see him step off the mound in despair, unable to do what he had done all through high school and through much of most of the time in the major league level, pitch competitive baseball. His record for the season was 1-7 and, and an earn run average of 7.95. After San Diego gave up in Kirby, he tried it with the Twins during spring training in 78. He lasted only two weeks before he was released. Kirby was out of the organized baseball well before his 30th birthday. In his six seasons of Major League Baseball, he had 261 games, 239 started, with a 75-104 record with a 384 ERA, 42 complete games, 8 shutouts, 1,548 innings pitched, and 1,061 strikeouts. Now, following his baseball career, Kirby was active uh, tournament chairman for the annual Major League Baseball Players Alumni Washington Metropolitan Area Charity Golf Tournament. The event, which benefited the American Lung Association, was part of the Swing with the Legends Golf Series. His family continued to live in San Diego County until 83, when he returned to Virginia. Kirby then became a self-employed financial securities broker. Unfortunately, on July 1991, Kirby underwent a very uh, demanding coronary operation to op- open a blockage in an artery just above his heart. After the procedure, he was told he had suffered a silent heart attack. Kirby had been complaining of a chest discomfort and numbness in his arm. He died of a heart attack on October 11, 91, at the young age of, get this, 43. He, his wife found him about 11 o'clock in the morning in his chair. It appeared that he had fallen asleep while reading and suffered a fatal heart attack. He was survived by his wife Susan, his mother Gloria, his sister Carolyn uh, Twyman, his son Clayton, his daughter Teresa Schoengold, and his two grandchildren Derek and Brandon Schoengold. He was buried in a National Memorial Park in Falls Church, Virginia. Now, uh, his passing was national news in Canada, Canada and front page news in Cincinnati and San Diego. But Clay Kirby was just, I, I, I know it's weird because he passed away in, 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 in that way. To me, he was a survivor. He never gave up and eventually it paid off with the Reds. But the Reds saw something in him that San Diego saw and Montreal saw later on. He was a fighter. You can never say uh, Clay Kirby was a quitter. If anything, Clay Kirby was dedicated to the game, and that's what would stand out for me. Clay Kirby was a was a real athlete, a real dedicated guy, a talented guy, and no matter what happened in San Diego, he always gave his best. But he should have kept him in for that no hitter, and that's the unofficial rule now. By the way, if you're going to have a chance at no hitter, even if the, you're trailing, they try to keep you in there. Very rarely do you see someone not given the opportunity to go for no hitter is almost in tribute to Clay Kirby because. You know, he's still, you know, he's, he's, he's dead uh, 33 years ago, but I mean, he's still quite missed by a lot of people. I know Expo fans still think of him every once in a while because he thought he was going to be part of that resurgence for the Expos in that mid-70s era. So that's the story of uh, World Series winner Clay Kirby. If you like what you're doing here with our podcast channel, uh, especially the Big Red Machine, the Vintage Podcast, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Have a good one, and Happy New Year. Bye.